If you're going for a run today, what's the best way to make sure you're at the top of your game? Many athletes rely on water or maybe energy drinks. New research suggests actually a spoonful of sugar alongside the water might be more helpful. We're going to talk to an expert about this and find out about the science behind it. But first, let's talk to our reporter, Frankie McCamley, who's with some runners in northwest London. Frankie, do you think they'll be convinced by this morning? Well, maybe. We'll have a chat to them. Welcome to this extremely chilly park, Gladstone Park in northwest London. Now, you wouldn't usually find me here, but you would usually find this group of extremely enthusiastic runners. Charles, you're leading the group today. I am. Um, now, you're going to do a 5K. How would you prepare? Normally, or oh, generally, I don't prepare in terms of food. I will get up out of bed, get ready and come straight down and run on an empty stomach. And what about a, a bigger run? Would you usually carb up the night before? Not, no, I will. If it's really big, I might take a few things with me, like a few gels or some sweets. Jelly babies sometimes help. But unless it's a really long, so long as I'm getting a you know meal in between. I don't run marathons, so I'm not, not going to drain myself too much. Well, you mentioned marathons. Danielle, you're a marathon runner. Yes. How do you get ready beforehand? Um, well, the night before, lots of carbs, pizza, pasta, that type of thing. And um, on the morning, maybe an energy drink beforehand. But I've tried that once and it hasn't really... I don't know if it's made that much of a difference, so it's more about staying yeah. hydrated during the run. Yeah. So the energy drink didn't work. How about a spoonful of sugar in your water before you set off? I would consider it. I mean, I am prepared to try anything, see if it works, I suppose. Um, so not against the idea, but I, I'm reluctant to have too much sugar, so um, I'd, I don't know. <laughs> OK, well, we'll give it a go this morning. I'll let you join. Everyone's getting prepared. Everyone's getting warmed up. It is still pretty chilly out here, so I'm going to go and join them. Uh, and back to you two in your lovely, warm studio. Good luck, Frankie. You know you love it out there, really. The great outdoors. outdoors. Embrace <laughs> it, Frankie. Thanks very much. So in the studio now, Dr Javier Gonzalez, who's from the University of Bath, who led the research. Welcome. Can you just give us the, the mugs guide, if you like, to the, to the science? Because this is not about, it's not directly performance related. This is effectively how your body works, isn't it? Yes, that's right. So um, when we exercise, we use carbohydrate. It's an important fuel during almost all exercise. And whilst our body uh, has its own carbohydrate stores, um, if we exercise for longer than an hour, then these can become low. And when they reach critically low levels, this is linked to early fatigue. So um, we were able to show in this recent study that if you consume sugar or carbohydrates during exercise, then you can prevent some of these carbohydrate stores, mainly in the liver, from becoming low. So what's the difference between consuming a spoonful of sugar in a bottle of water to the energy drinks that we see advertised for runners or the, the gels? Yep. Is, uh, is this better? Is this... Is this easier for the body to digest? So not all um, sports and energy drinks are the same. Um, some contain um, a sugar called glucose and some contain mixtures of sugars, um, including sucrose, which is the other sugar that we tested in this study. Um, and glucose can only be absorbed by our stomach and intestine at, at a certain rate. So if you're trying to get a lot of sugar and carbohydrates into the body, then there's a fixed limit for, for glucose. Um, if you, we think that if you combine different sources of carbohydrates and sugars, then you can get more carbohydrate into the bloodstream and delivered to the different organs. There have been quite a few studies done over the years about the, the use of you know, so-called sports drinks as against the benefits of just drinking water. People will be forgiven for getting pretty confused by now. Yeah, so, um, and I just want to be clear, I'm not saying in every single bout of exercise you should consume sugar. Um, but if it's a particularly hard or important race or training session, um, and it's mainly when the exercise lasts for longer than an hour that, that carbohydrates can really have a benefit. And I would imagine that you need to get your body used to this as well. It's part of training in this way, not just straight away switching. Yeah, and absolutely. So um, if you're trying to consume a lot of carbohydrate um, during exercise, then a lot of people um, struggle to, to tolerate that in terms of they, they get their stomach feels full and, and they get some side effects. Um, there's emerging evidence that perhaps you might be able to train it by practicing uh, your nutrition. Dr. Javier Gonzalez, thank you very much for your time thank this you. morning. I know someone who'd have been listening quite intently, Helen, who's taking a look at the weather, but you're a runner as well, Helen, so always open, I imagine, to new ideas to help you perform Absolutely. better. 
Well, absolutely. I was more interested because I'm a badminton player. I, I run to keep fit. I play badminton matches, which can last all evening. So you've had dinner, it settles down. I get quite light, light-headed towards the end of an evening, so I might have to have a bottle of water with some sugar in. Indeed. You learn something new every day. Yeah. Come on, tell yeah, us about this do. wind. There's oh, a lot of it around. Oh, shall I? Go on then. OK, so the weekend, basically...